am going to talk about writing the argumentation essay for the AP English Language and Composition exam. However, before I get into the details of that essay, I want to take a few minutes to talk about the AP exam itself. The most important thing to remember is that the AP exam is not a writing test. It's not about how well you can punctuate, about how big your vocabulary is, about how you can write long, complicated sentences or use parallel structure. It's a thinking test. It's a test of how good you are at handling big ideas and understanding difficult concepts. And how good do you have to be? Well, remember, if you pass the AP test, you get credit for the first year of college English. So they aren't looking to see if you are really smart for a high school student. They aren't even looking to see if you're smart for enough to start college. When they read your essays, they want to see someone who is already so mature, so sophisticated in their thinking, that they would be wasting their time in a freshman college class. They want to see that you are already on the same level as a college sophomore. Because if you aren't, you really do need that freshman English class. Now, how good, good writing certainly helps you make your good thinking clear. Above all, organized writing makes the depth of your thinking clear to your reader. And muddled, confused writing can cover up sophisticated thoughts. So writing matters. It matters a lot. But writing is the way you show you have the thoughts. The thoughts are what count. So what kind of thoughts do they look for? What can a college sophomore do that the average high school student can't? What is the signal that you are too advanced for freshman English? In terms of the argumentation essay, what they are looking for is complexity. The world is not a simple place, and they want to see that you can recognize that. The argumentation essay will always ask you to take a position on an issue. Should you give money to charity? Should voting be mandatory? Do we always have the right to free speech? We start being faced with these sorts of questions when we are little. Should you tell your mommy you broke the lamp? Should you share your toys with your sister? Should you give the cat a bath? When we are small children, the answers to these questions seem simple. And more importantly, the reasons for the answers seem simple. Yes, you should tell your mom you broke the lamp because if you don't, you'll get in more trouble. Yes, you should share because you want them to share with you. No, you shouldn't give the cat a bath because it makes him angry and he scratches. As we get older, the questions get more and more complicated. Should you tell a friend's secret? What if she's planning on hurting herself? What if keeping that secret will lead to someone else getting hurt? Should you pay an expensive vet bill to keep a pet alive? What if it means the pet just suffers for longer? What if it means the pet might suffer for longer, but might get better, but probably won't? None of these have easy answers. As we get older still, we tend to look back at all the things we believed growing up, the received wisdom that we accepted just because we were told, and we begin to question everything. Why should you share your things? Why should you put your family in front of your friends? Why should you go to church or temple? Why should you be nice to your grandmother when she isn't nice to you? Why should you go to college? Why shouldn't you do drugs or get bad grades or skip school? Suddenly, the reasons for our beliefs are as important as the beliefs themselves. And because you don't want to get in trouble isn't a good enough answer anymore. Oftentimes, we wrestle with these questions and end up believing the same things we started believing. But now we have reasons. Now those beliefs are ours, not just something we accepted. Other times, our beliefs change 180 degrees when all the reasons we can think of point the other way. And sometimes, we never do decide how we feel. We keep wrestling, keep thinking, keep coming up with ideas and exceptions and what ifs that change how we feel. So that's how a young adult thinks, and that's what they want to see that you can do. That you can take an ethical question and not just repeat what you think the grown-ups want to hear about it, but really sit down and think about all the complicated implications and problems and then decide how you feel about the issue and, most importantly, why you feel that way. They want to see that you have sophisticated beliefs and reasons for those beliefs. Because if that's true, you really are wasting your time 
in a freshman English class, and you really do need to move on to something more advanced. Now, if you're sitting here listening to me talk, I'm going to assume that you've started the process of questioning and wondering and debating about your beliefs. If you haven't, I don't know how to jumpstart it. It'll happen in its own time. What I do know how to do is to help you better put those thoughts and questions and reasons into words, to help you organize what is naturally an organic, chaotic process into something more systematic, something easier to share with others, something that the AP readers will recognize. We're gonna practice with a sample AP prompt. Together, we will go through the process of reading a prompt, brainstorming to discover our beliefs, and then organizing and explaining our reasons for those beliefs. The first step is to read the entire prompt and passage. Identify the issue you are being asked to respond to. Remember that this is not rhetorical analysis. Don't get slowed down worrying about diction or parallel structure, things like that. All you need to do is to extract the central issue. Let's look at the central issue in this particular prompt. For years, corporations have sponsored high school sports. Their ads are found on the outfield fence in baseball parks or on the walls of the gymnasium, the football stadium, or even the locker room. Corporate logos are even found on players' uniforms. But some schools have moved beyond corporate sponsorship of sports to allowing corporate partners to place their names and ads on all kinds of school facilities, libraries, music rooms, cafeterias. Some schools accept money to require students to watch Channel One, a news program that includes advertising, and schools often negotiate exclusive contracts with soft drink or clothing companies. Some people argue that corporate partnerships are a necessity for cash-strapped schools. Others argue that schools should provide an environment free from ads and corporate influence. Using appropriate evidence, write an essay in which you evaluate the pros and cons of corporate sponsorship for schools and indicate why you find one position more persuasive than the other. Corporate sponsorship is any time a school takes money in return for putting up ads anywhere on their campus or during school activities. Once you've identified the issue, write it out in one sentence or less. Should schools accept money from corporate sponsors in return for allowing the corporations to place ads where students will see them? Once you have done that, cross out the prompt you do not want to keep returning to it. From now on, this is all about your position, your beliefs, your reasons. Any time spent arguing with the original speaker is time wasted. Now you want to brainstorm on the complexity of the issue. Even issues that look simple at first always have more going on than you see in that first glance. If it wasn't a complicated issue, they wouldn't put it on the AP exam. Some of the benefits of a corporate sponsor in schools would be that schools need money for programs. Companies that are involved with schools may contribute in other ways, and funding through taxes is uncertain and difficult. But there are disadvantages. Advertisements in schools can be distracting to students. Students have no choice but to attend school. They're a captive audience, and is it really fair to advertise to them? Advertisements can be immoral, and corporations can gain too much power over schools. Once you have listed the ideas, it's time to think about your thesis statement. A thesis statement is a one-sentence summary of your opinion. It's the focus of the essay. Everything else you write will be the reasons why your thesis statement, your opinion, is true. Thesis statements come in two broad types, sides and positions. A side is absolute. It's all one way or the other. You 100% agree or disagree with an idea. The prompt will refer to this as supporting, defending, refuting, or challenging. When you agree or disagree with the prompt, you are taking a side. A position is more complicated. A position claims that something is true in some ways, under some circumstances, for some people, or with some exceptions. This is referred to as qualifying in some prompts. Generally speaking, a position is more sophisticated than a side. Upper-level essays, seven or above, tend to take a position. If you look at the wording of this particular prompt, where it tells you to evaluate the pros and cons of a corporate sponsorship, you will see that it is strongly encouraging you to take a position. However, a solid essay that takes a side can earn up to a six, and that can be enough to pass the AP exam. 
But in general, I tend to encourage my students to develop a position on a topic. When developing a position, here are some qualifying words and phrases you can use to construct your thesis. You can use words like however, although, while, some, despite, exception, misunderstanding, to some degree, for many people, from the point of view of, on one hand, on the other hand, it is true that, or it is or is not the case that. Now, I'm going to use some of these phrases to come up with several sample thesis statements that, that address this prompt. First, however, I want to review the issues I identified earlier. The benefits are that schools need money for programs. Companies that are involved with schools may contribute in other ways. Funding through taxes is uncertain and difficult. The disadvantages are that advertisements can be distracting. Students have no choice but to attend school. They are a captive audience. Advertisements can be immoral, and corporations can gain too much power over schools. Now I will combine these issues into positions, thesis statements. While corporate sponsorship may be a necessary evil for schools in need of funding, steps should be taken to limit the influence of corporations. Despite the possible negative influence of advertisements, schools should not turn down funding. It's true that advertising can be distracting, but smart school policies can limit the negative impact and still attract money. Schools always need cash. However, that does not mean we should brainwash our students to get it. To some degree, schools should refuse corporate money, but one important exception is funding extracurricular activities. There are certain things that you should avoid saying in your thesis. For example, absolutes, always, never, completely, everyone. Remember, when you write a thesis statement, you're promising to prove something. If you, prove, if you promise that you're going to prove that something is always true, then you have to prove that it's true in every single case, or that it has never, ever happened. That's a very difficult thing to do. Also, avoid statements like, I think, or in my opinion, or it seems to me. This makes you sound indecisive. Don't ask questions. Your thesis statement is not, what would happen if? Your thesis statement is your opinion, and when something is, something, when something is an opinion, it needs to be stated firmly. Also avoid generic statements. This is a very important issue that can be looked at in different ways, or there are two sides to this issue and both have merit. It looks like you're avoiding taking a position, as if you had two good friends fighting, and all you can say is, well, I can see both sides. Not, that's not going to work in argumentation. You have to put your foot down and decide what you feel. Once you have your thesis statement, your next step is to plan your body paragraphs. It's important not to jump right into writing. Students often worry that they will run out of time and that any time planning is somehow wasted. However, writing goes much more quickly if you know what you need to say. It's just a matter of finding the right words. Trust me when I say there will be plenty of time to write the essay after you've done the planning. It's now time to analyze your thesis. Analysis is the process of taking something apart to see how it works. You need to look at your thesis and figure out what the parts are. What will you have to do in order to prove that it is true? What are the short-term goals I need to accomplish to prove the thesis is true? There are a series of questions you can ask yourself to help with this process. What ideas or facts do I have to show are true? What emotion do I want to create in my audience? What two similar concepts do I need to show are actually different? What important idea or concept do I need to define? What potential objections or problems do I need to deal with? Not all of these goals are relevant to every thesis statement. Every argument is different. They are simply a way of thinking about a thesis statement in order to take it apart and see what steps you need to go through to create a reasoned argument. Now we will go through a few of the thesis statements I showed you earlier and analyze each. The first thesis statement, while corporate sponsorship may be a necessary evil for schools in need of funding, steps should be taken to limit the influence of corporations. 
Okay, to prove this, I need to prove that corporate sponsorship is necessary for some schools. I also need to prove that corporations should not have too much influence. And finally, I need to show how that influence can be limited. Only after I've proven those three things will I have proven my thesis as a whole. Here's another thesis. Schools always need cash. However, that does not mean we should brainwash our students to get it. To prove this, first, I need to show that advertisements do brainwash students. Next, I need to show that student brainwashing is a bad thing and not something schools should allow. Finally, I need to anticipate the argument that schools must have funding and give a response. For a third thesis, to some degree, schools should refuse corporate money, but one important exception is funding extracurricular activities. I need to explain why schools should refuse corporate money. I need to explain the difference between extracurricular activities and academic activities. And I need to explain why corporate sponsors are okay for extracurricular activities. Only again after I have proven those three things will I have proven that, yes, schools should refuse corporate money, but an important exception is funding extracurricular activities. Each one of these goals is a step in your argument, and each will be its own body paragraph. However, before you can start writing those body paragraphs, you need to know how exactly you will accomplish each one. The most common mistake students make in writing argumentation essays is that they fail to give reasons for their beliefs. This is because, for most of your life, people have told you what to believe without giving you their reasons. Instead, we tend to just repeat ourselves using slightly different words. This is called begging the question. It's phrases like this. It's important not to kill people because if you do, you are a murderer, and that is a bad person, and so it must be a bad thing to do. Or, no one should steal things because stealing things is against the law. There is a law against it because it is the wrong thing to do. Or, you should keep a friend's secret because part of what it means to be a friend is to keep their secrets, and if you don't, you aren't a good friend at all. Each of these look like it's making an argument, but really, it's just repeating itself. This is surprisingly easy to do. Thousands of years ago, the Greeks recognized this habit and called it a tautology. Today, teachers of rhetoric refer to it as begging the question. It's important to avoid this in your writing. In order to do so, it's important to make sure that you always have a reason for your arguments. Don't fall back on the shoulds. You should do your homework. You should be nice to old people. You should give to charity, things like that. These simply beg the question, why? Why should you? And your job as a mature college sophomore is to have an answer to the question, why? There are some questions you can ask yourself to make it easier to come up with reasons. You can ask yourself, when have I read or heard about this sort of thing? This calls for examples, for examples of the idea you are demonstrating. Examples can come from current events, popular culture, literature, history, or science. Another question you can ask yourself is, when has this happened to me? This calls for an anecdote, a personal story that illustrates your point. When telling a personal story, it is perfectly acceptable to use I. You can also ask yourself, what if this happened? What if everyone did this? At times, a hypothetical example can really illustrate the benefits or problems with an idea. You can also ask yourself, what is this like? The analogy is a great way to illustrate a point. You connect a new idea to something the reader already understands. You can ask, who else has spoken about this? The appeal to authority works if there is an expert on the topic who has spoken about it. And you can ask, why am I especially qualified to speak about this issue? If there's something about you that makes you an expert on this topic, feel free to share that. It gives your argument more credibility. What do I mean when I say blank? Some terms are so broad they need a more specific definition. Things like love or honor or fairness or justice can mean different things to different people and in different contexts, and so they need to be defined. Let's apply this to each of our goals for one essay. For example, with the thesis, schools always need cash.
However, that does not mean we should brainwash our students to get it. We said that one goal had to be to show that advertisements do brainwash students. And so we can ask ourselves, what does it mean to brainwash students? Well, brainwashing is changing someone's opinion against their will. You can ask yourself, when has this happened to me? When my mom packed my lunch in the third grade, I had a fit because I wanted the Lunchables that I had seen on TV. For our second body paragraph, same goal, I mean the same thesis, schools always need cash. However, that does not mean we should brainwash our students to get it. Now, for body paragraph number two, I need to show that student brainwashing is a bad thing and not something schools should allow. What is this like? Students have to go to school, so it's forcing them to see ads. Like if a person had to go listen to a certain politician's speech in order to get life-saving medication. What if this were the case? If schools get in the business of deciding what opinions to force on kids, some of those opinions could be harmful. Like the idea that you have to wear a certain brand of clothes to be cool, or that a healthy lunch is a candy bar and a soda. For body paragraph number three, I need to anticipate the argument that schools must have funding and give a response. In order to do that, I might ask myself, when have I read or heard about this sort of thing? Schools do need funds for art, music, sports, academics. These are real needs that are not going away. When, or, when else have I read or heard about this sort of thing? Schools in the past were funded by taxes and PTAs in the community. They could be again. When you look through old high school yearbooks, you never see ads painted on the schools. When has this happened to me? My spirit club at school needed funds to pay for meals when we went to away games. Rather than take corporate money, parents volunteered to bring grills out for tailgate barbecue, and we had bake sales to raise the money for supplies. Now the bulk of the work is done. All we have to do is assemble it into an essay. Essays start with an introduction. This needs to be brief. Write two or three sentences summarizing the issue in a neutral way, not showing your opinion, and then end with your thesis statement. If it works gracefully, you might quote a short snippet from the original prompt, or mention the name of the person you are responding to. If there is a historical context to an issue, you might explain it. Here are a couple sample introductions from this prompt. Funding is a perpetual problem in American schools. Everything from lab equipment to football jerseys to art supplies needs to be paid for out of an ever-shrinking pot. In the face of these demands, many schools have turned to corporate partnerships to fund these essential programs. Corporations pay schools to place advertisements in places where students will see them. Despite the possible negative influence of advertisements, schools should not turn down funding. Let's look at a second introduction. Schools are always in desperate need of more funding. State-provided funds are often very small and cover only the bare necessities. Schools are forced to choose between cutting vital programs and accepting money from corporations in return for posting advertisements. To some degree, schools should refuse corporate money, but one important exception is funding extracurricular activities. Let's look at a third introduction. More, more, more. Schools everywhere clamor for more funding funds for field trips, for sports equipment, even funds for school supplies. In order to gain these funds, some schools have allowed corporate sponsors to place advertisements around the school in return for cash payments. Schools always need cash. However, that does not mean we should brainwash our students to get it. Next, you will need to start your body paragraphs. Each body paragraph needs to begin with a simple, clear topic sentence. Topic sentences are the most important part of your essay. They serve three major purposes. They tell the reader what the paragraph is about so that they know what to expect. They tell the writer what the paragraph is about so that you don't wander off. And lastly, they refocus the reader if they've become lost or confused about the essay. They put them back on track. Each topic sentence should identify the step in the argument that will be completed by this paragraph. So for each topic sentence, look back at your plans and determine which step you want to tackle next. Topic sentences should be simple and clear. Their only role is to identify the topic of the paragraph. Save your examples for later. 
Here are some topic sentences created out of each of the goals we laid out for one sample thesis before. The thesis was, while corporate sponsorship may be a necessary evil for schools in need of funding, steps should be taken to limit the influence of corporations. If the goal of the first paragraph is, I need to prove that corporate sponsorship is necessary for some schools, my topic sentence might be, for many schools, accepting corporate sponsorship is not a choice. They must raise money. So I took that goal and I turned it into a simple, clear sentence. Look at our second goal. I need to prove that corporations should not have too much influence. The topic sentence would be, even though schools desperately need this money, they need to be careful. Corporate influence can hurt students. Let's look at our third goal. I need to show how that influence can be limited. My topic sentence, schools can take steps to limit the influence of corporate sponsorship on students. Once you have a topic sentence, it's just a matter of filling out the reasons you've already decided. Keep looking back at your planning, don't ad-lib. Here's some examples based on these topic sentences. For each topic sentence, we will go from a planning side to a paragraph slide. Our thesis was, while corporate sponsorship may be a necessary evil for schools in need of funding, steps should be taken to limit the influence of corporations. In the first body paragraph, I need to prove that corporate sponsorship is necessary for some schools. When have I read or heard about this sort of thing? We are in a recession and schools all over the state are having to cut valuable programs. Without corporate sponsors, schools simply won't have the supplies they need for art and music and sports. What is this like? Turning down corporate sponsorship when the need is so strong would be like a poor mother letting her children starve rather than take charity. In the end, the most important thing is education. When has this happened to me? My school choir can only afford to travel to competitions because we are sponsored by Gatorade. Yes, we look a little silly in our Gatorade outfits, but it's better than not being there at all. Now I'm going to put this into a paragraph. For many schools, accepting corporate sponsorship is not a choice. They must raise money. We are in the middle of a recession and state governments are cutting budgets everywhere. If schools want to keep having sports and art and music, and in some cases, new textbooks and electricity, they must raise the money somehow. To turn down that money on principle would be like a mother letting her children starve rather than take charity. School pride is not as important as education. In my own school, we only have a choir because we accept money from Gatorade. Without that, we couldn't afford to go to competition. We look a little silly with the Gatorade logo on our uniforms, but it's better than not being there at all. Here's one important tip. After you write each paragraph, go back and reread your thesis statement and your brainstorming page. This will keep you on focus. You don't want to drift away from your central opinion. Let's move on to our second body paragraph. Remember our thesis, while corporate sponsorship may be a necessary evil for schools in need of funding, steps should be taken to limit the influence of corporations. My goal for my second body paragraph is to prove that corporations should not have too much influence. What might happen if a corporation did have too much influence? Once schools get dependent on corporate money, the corporation could influence the school. Coke could demand they serve only Coke products at lunch, even though they're unhealthy. Or HP could insist that teachers say that HP calculators are the best ones out there. What would this be like? My parents give me an allowance and now they can use it to threaten me. They know I will do as they say because if they take my allowance away, I won't be able to afford my social life. When have I read about this sort of thing? Lots of celebrities get in trouble if they do not support the corporate sponsors in public. For example, if you are in a Pizza Hut commercial, you can't eat Domino's in public. The same thing would happen to schools. Now I'm going to take my body paragraph goal and turn it into a topic sentence, and then beneath that, I'm going to add all of my reasons. Even though schools desperately need this money, they need to be careful. Corporate influence can hurt students. If a corporation gets a school hooked on money from that company, the school will have to do whatever the company says. It's like my parents. They give me an allowance, and now that I'm used to it, they can use it to threaten me. They know I will do as they say and to keep it coming because without it, I can't afford my social life. Corporations already do this. If a celebrity is in a Pizza Hut commercial, 
he or she will lose a lot of money if they are seen in public eating any other kind of pizza. We're now going to look at a third body paragraph, but remember, first we're going to review our thesis to make sure we're staying on track. Our thesis, while corporate sponsorship may be a necessary evil, all right, we proved that, in need of funding, steps should be taken to limit the influence of corporations. So for body paragraph number three, I need to show how that influence can be limited. I could ask myself, what is this like? Driving is another thing that is dangerous, but we have to do it. We just find ways to make it safer. In the same way, we can accept corporate money, but limit the damage. What have I seen, read, or heard about this sort of thing? Some schools allow advertisements on their sports fields, but not inside the school. This keeps the influence at a minimum. When has this happened to me? Another possibility is to make sure that the schools have other sources of funding as well, so they are not too dependent on corporations and can turn them away if need be. For example, my school had a local donut shop as a sponsor for our baseball team. They wanted us to eat only their donuts at our games, but the donuts made us sick. Because we also had funding through our PTA, we were able to tell the donut company no. Now we're going to put that together with a topic sentence and a body paragraph. Schools can take steps to limit the influence of corporate sponsorship on students. It's like driving. Yes, it's dangerous, but it's necessary, so you have to find ways to make it as safe as possible. For example, some schools allow corporate sponsors to put up ads, but only on the athletic fields, never in the school itself. This limits the influence over students. In my school, we're careful never to be too dependent on any one source. For example, a local donut shop sponsored our baseball team, but they wanted the team to eat only donuts before and during the game. This made them sick. Because the baseball team also raised money through fundraisers in the PTA, they were able to tell the donut shop to go away. Once this is done, it's time to wrap up with your conclusion. A note about conclusions. They're the least important part of an AP essay. If you're running out of time, it's best to finish your body paragraphs and skip the conclusion than it is to skip a body paragraph and write a full conclusion. However, if you have time, a conclusion can add polish to a good paper. A conclusion should add meaning to your opinion, connect it to something larger. Your thesis gives your opinion, your body paragraphs prove that opinion is correct, and your conclusion says why it matters. It connects that opinion to something wider. Here is a sample conclusion based on the essay we have written. In the end, schools have no choice but to accept corporate money in return for placing advertisements. However, a responsible school can find ways to protect their students from undue influence. Hopefully, students will learn from these experiences and be better prepared to face a lifetime of attempted corporate influence. The last sentence emphasizes the wider implication of the topic. To review this, the three most important aspects of an argumentation essay are having a strong thesis, clear topic sentences, and solid reasons for support. In order to write a strong thesis, you must read the prompt carefully, identify the central question you're being asked your opinion about, and leave the prompt behind once you know what the issue is. Furthermore, to write a strong thesis, you must think about all the reasons it is not a simple issue. Take your time to look at all angles and develop a position. Don't just take a simple side. Next, you need to write clear topic sentences. To write clear topic sentences, you must analyze your thesis and determine all the goals you must accomplish to prove that the whole thesis is true. You need to break those goals down into paragraph topics and you need to write topic sentences that state simply and clearly what the paragraph will be about. And finally, you need to have solid reasons for support. To support your thesis and topic sentences, you must avoid just saying people should do something or assuming everyone agrees that something is true. Use examples, personal experience, analogies, hypotheticals, or definitions to prove your point. Thank you very much for taking the time today to listen to this lesson. The Argumentation Essay is a rare opportunity for you to share your opinions in an organized, professional fashion. 
If you think of it that way, you may find that you even enjoy writing.